If you have a flat tire on your car, do you just throw the tire and wheel away? No, of course not. You remove the wheel and blow some air into the tire. Then you listen for a leak or use some soapy water to pinpoint it. When you find the leak, you fix it. You do much the same thing when diagnosing hydraulic system problems. If your diagnosis indicates leakage in the rock shaft or selective control valves, you don't just throw the old unit away and replace it. You should test the rock shaft or SCV to see where it leaks and fix it if possible. This program describes some air pressure tests you can perform to check the rock shaft and SCVs for internal leakage. This leakage might be caused by a bad valve or valve seat or possibly by a crack in a housing. This program also shows you how to use the air pressure test kit, a special set of parts you need to perform the leak tests. After watching this program and using a technical manual, you should be able to perform air leak tests on the following hydraulic components. Selective control valves, mechanical sensing rock shafts and hydraulic sensing rock shafts, including both the rock shaft control valve housing and the rock shaft housing. These tests apply to 40 series row crop and four wheel drive tractors, but can be adapted to 30 series row crop and four wheel drive tractors. Now, first of all, how will you know when to perform these air leak tests? Section 270 of the tractor's technical manual lists a step-by-step -step procedure for diagnosing hydraulic system problems. Under certain conditions, the procedure tells you to leak test the rock shaft or SCVs. Be careful not to leap ahead to any conclusions. If the diagnostic procedure indicates leakage, perform all visual and pressure checks before you take the system apart to do a leak test. You may pick up some clues that will help you solve the problem. Also, before you can perform a leak test, you need to gather up a few special tools, like the air pressure test kit. This kit has the air nozzle, adapters, caps, and rubber plugs you'll need to perform the leak tests. You'll also need at least four of these plates. Actually, they're the rear plates from air conditioning compressors, but you'll use them to hold down the rubber plugs from the test kit. This is how you use a plate to hold a rubber plug. Fasten the plate to the valve housing with a cap screw and washer. If the existing hole in the plate won't work, just drill another hole off to the side. You need only one cap screw to hold the plug. Finally, you'll need a regulated source of air pressure. We recommend that you set the regulator to a maximum of 70 PSI. However, if you have problems holding the nozzle in a valve bore with the pressure at 70 PSI, lower the pressure setting until you can handle it. Now that you have all the necessary tools, let's assume the diagnostic procedure indicates that an SCV is leaking. To leak test it, first remove the SCV according to the procedures in the technical manual. You check the pressure passage first. Put the quick coupler levers into the flow position. Then put the appropriate rubber plug on the air nozzle. Force the nozzle into the pressure inlet bore and apply air pressure. With the SEV in neutral, all poppets in the valve should be seated and there shouldn't be any air leakage out the couplers. However, watch for oil that might blow out of the couplers if the valve is leaky. If you do detect air leakage, Replace the pressure poppets according to procedures in the technical manual. Then perform the test again to see if you solve the problem. Do not grind the valve seats unless you find evidence of seat damage. To check the return passages, leave the levers in flow position. Put the appropriate adapter on the air nozzle and plug it into the right-hand coupler and apply air pressure. Listen for air leakage coming from the return bore in the SCV housing. Check the left-hand coupler the same way. If there's leakage in either case, replace the return poppets and then retest the valve. Again, grind the valve seats only if you find seat damage. If you think air may be leaking through the valve housing while testing the pressure and return passages, brush some soapy water over the casting. If you find a crack, you'll probably have to replace the housing. You can use this technique whenever you suspect a leaky housing. However, you should never allow soapy water to get inside the valve housing. If you want to check for leaks inside the housing, use oil instead of soapy water. That's all you need to do on the SCV, although you might want to pressure test each of the SCVs on the tractor. 
Leak testing the rock shaft, however, is a little more complicated. In fact, you test the rock shaft in two separate parts. First, remove the rock shaft control valve housing according to procedures in the technical manual and leak test its passages. Then check the rock shaft housing. This drawing shows how oil flows through the mechanical sensing rock shaft. As you can see, there are many passages. Let's review this diagram briefly to show how the rock shaft works. When the operator moves the lever to raise the rock shaft, oil flows through the flow control valve, through the pressure valve, past the throttle valve, and into the rock shaft cylinder. When the operator lowers the rock shaft, the cylinder forces oil past the throttle valve, through the open return valve, and into the return circuit. We'll use this diagram to show you which passage a leak test affects. This diagram depicts a hydraulic sensing rock shaft. Notice the addition of a load control valve and a draft sensing cylinder. There are four tests to perform on the rock shaft control valve housing. The first one applies only to hydraulic sensing rock shafts and tests the load control valve and SCV pressure passages. This diagram of the rock shaft control valve housing shows the passages we'll be testing now. First, install rubber plugs in the load control valve inlet bore and the pressure bores that go to the SCV inlets. Hold these plugs in place with plates. Remove the filter from the load control valve outlet fitting. Then, with an adapter on the nozzle, apply air pressure to the load control valve outlet. Normally, there will be leakage through the load control valve at its filtered orifice and the end of the load control valve piston. However, if you think there are other leaks, use some oil to pinpoint their location. The next test checks the control valve pressure passage, shown here on the diagram for a hydraulic sensing rock shaft. The passage is the same on both mechanical and hydraulic sensing rock shafts, but the procedure is different. On the hydraulic sensing rock shaft control valve, first take this plug off and remove the flow control valve along with its spring. Use an adapter on the nozzle and apply air pressure to the flow control valve inlet. There should be no leakage anywhere. To do this test on a mechanical sensing rock shaft, first remove the directional control valve housing. Then remove the flow control valve and spring. Put the directional control valve housing back on and plug the pressure bores, if any, going to the SCVs. Put a rubber plug on the nozzle and apply air pressure to the front pressure inlet bore. There should not be any leakage. If there is a leak, the pressure valve is the most likely source of leakage. Squirt some oil on the pressure valve through the rear bore and watch for bubbles. We'll be checking this passage next, the pressure to return valve passage. It's the same passage on mechanical and hydraulic sensing rock shafts, and the same procedure is used on both. First, disconnect the return spring from the valve operating cam with a looped wire. This allows the valve operating cam to go into a neutral position. Then put a rubber plug on the nozzle and apply air pressure to the rear bore that goes to the rock shaft cylinder. There shouldn't be any leakage. Next, we'll be checking the rock shaft control valve return passage, as shown here on the mechanical sensing diagram. It's the same passage on both, but the procedure is slightly different. On the mechanical sensing rock shaft, use the looped wire again and reconnect the return spring to the valve operating cam. Install a rubber plug in the front return outlet bore and hold it with a plate. If the tractor is equipped with lift assist, Cap the fitting used for the charge pressure line with the appropriate cap. If the tractor has a third SCV, hold a rubber plug in the return bore for that SCV. You don't need to plug the return bore for the number two SCV because the directional control valve seals this passage. Finally, put a rubber plug on the nozzle and apply air pressure to the rear pressure bore that goes to the rock shaft cylinder. A likely place for abnormal leakage is the pressure valve. 
the directional control valve could also be stuck, allowing a leak through the return bore. There is normal leakage for lubrication around the pin that holds the valve operating cam spring. The test for the hydraulic sensing rock shaft is basically the same. Cap the inlet elbow to the flow control valve. Then the return spring on the valve operating cam is reconnected and a rubber plug and plate are installed in the front return bore. Hold a plug in the number three SCV return bore if there is one on the tractor and apply air to the rear pressure bore. There should be leakage only through the linkage lube orifice. Well, that completes all the leakage tests for the rock shaft control valve. Now we have to check the rock shaft housing. The first test we'll do applies only to the hydraulic sensing rock shaft as shown here. It's the left hand SCV pressure passage. First, remove the left hand SCV or the cover if there is only one SCV and install a rubber plug in the pressure bore. Put an adapter on the nozzle and apply air pressure at the SCV pressure inlet. There shouldn't be any leakage. The diagram shows the cylinder pressure passage, which is the same on both mechanical and hydraulic sensing rock shafts. The procedure is the same on both too. Remove the rock shaft cylinder cover and install a rubber plug in the bore from the rock shaft control valve and secure it with a plate. Then put a rubber plug on the nozzle and apply air pressure to the passage that connects to the rock shaft control valve rear bore. There should be no leakage. Next, we'll be checking the pressure passage to the rock shaft control valve housing. To do this test on both types of rock shafts, you need to use a special pressure control valve body. The technical manual shows you how to make this tool, which is actually a regular pressure control valve body with a bleed hole braced shut. On a hydraulic sensing rock shaft, cap the elbow that goes to the rock shaft low control valve and the elbow that goes to the left hand SCV. Use the caps provided in the test kit. Plug the load control valve bore too and secure the plug with a plate. Then remove the pressure control valve body and install the special valve body, the one with the bleed hole braced shut. Using an adapter, apply air pressure to the special control valve body. There shouldn't be any leakage. If for some reason you decided not to use the special valve body and left in the real pressure control valve body, there would be some leakage past the bleed hole. On a mechanical sensing rock shaft, this is the passage you test. First, install rubber plugs in the front pressure bore that goes to the control valve and the pressure bore for the left hand SCV and secure them with plates. Then install the special pressure control valve body and apply air pressure with an adapter. There shouldn't be any leakage unless you left the regular pressure control valve body in. Then there would be slight leakage past the bleed hole. This shows you the return passage we'll be checking, which is the same on both types of rock shaft. The procedure is the same too. First, install the special pressure control valve body again. Only this time, put four 60,000th inch flat washers between the body and the elbow fitting. These washers must be small enough to fit into the elbow. They act as shims to keep the valve body sealed against the innermost O-ring inside the housing. Then install rubber plugs in the return bores for the rock shaft valve and the left hand SCV and secure them with plates. Also for this test, make sure that the rock shaft cylinder cover is installed. The bottom cover must be installed too, although you should not have had to take it off at this point in your tests. Finally, Use an adapter and apply air pressure to the return outlet of the rock shaft housing. There should be no leakage. This shows the left hand SCV return passage on a mechanical sensing rock shaft. On mechanical sensing rock shafts, this passage is a separate line into the rock shaft cavity. To perform this test, you must remove the rock shaft housing from the tractor and then take off the bottom cover, cam, shaft, and arm. That's quite an operation, but if the previous test on the rock shaft return passage turned out okay, you don't have to do this test. You do not need to perform this test at all on hydraulic sensing rock shafts. To do this test, 
Hold a rubber plug in the return bore of the arm cavity and apply air pressure through the left hand SCV return bore with a rubber plug on the nozzle. There should be no leakage. Well, by now you should be more familiar with the air leak test. You should know how to test an SCV, a mechanical sensing rock shaft, and a hydraulic sensing rock shaft. The same procedures are listed in the technical manual for each tractor, in case you'd like to review them. You may also want to watch this program again if you feel that you've had problems with the material. And if possible, take the time to use the air pressure test kit and practice with a few passages.